Hey guys, Michael Stillwell here from Stillwell Pianos in Mesa, Arizona. And this is one of my favorite pianos in the, in the entire world. I have a Mason & Hamlin in my house, but this is a Mason & Hamlin A that was built in 1908. Now that puts it in the golden era, so anything from 1900 to 1930 in America was the golden era of pianos. That was when piano manufacturing was kind of at its peak. That's where you want to be if you're buying an antique piano. This is that golden era, 1900 to 1930, and this is pretty much right in the middle of that. We got this piano from one of our brokers, so we always, being that Mason & Hamlin is my favorite piano company, I have one in my house. Uh, it's very easy for me to sell them just because I am passionately a Mason fan, but um, we always try to have Masons of all different price points, as much as we can at least. So we did not restore this piano. This piano came to us already restored. I, from the looks of it, it looks like somebody did this work maybe about 10 years ago. It looks like they did new hammers, they painted the plate, they restrung the piano, they did new dampers, they refinished the piano itself, they did a bunch of action work, they rebushed the action. So we've gone in and kind of done some more of that stuff, touched some stuff up, regulated, voiced it, but basically just dialed it in and we did not go all the way to where we sell these things. You know, this is a Mason A from the Golden Era. We sell Mason A's from the Golden Era for twenty-five to thirty thousand dollars sometimes, but it's because we're putting in maybe brand new whippins or brand new hammer shanks and flanges or whatever. So we always try to have Masons kind of price point all over the place just because we're passionately Mason fans and we want you guys to be able to enjoy them. So this is a perfect example of that. This price is killer to get into a handmade heirloom um, caliber piano. One other thing I want to talk about with Mason is, and if you've watched any of our other videos, you probably already know this, but Mason and Hamlin's have what's called a tension resonator up underneath the piano. So in a piano soundboard, the soundboard itself is concaved, it's shaped like this. It's called a crown. And how we do this is these are just big sheets of wood, right, of spruce. And then we have sugar pine underneath, and it's basically these ribs. And we shave them down so they're kind of shaped like this. And then we glue these panels on top, and that's how we have our soundboard, and that's how it's shaped like this. But what happens over time when pianos get a lot older is the separation between the two planks. And now that's not the end of the world. It's the end of the world when the two planks separate from the ribs and the muscle memory pulls them flat again. And then that's going to sound like maybe an electric guitar that's not plugged in. Well, back to the tension resonator, Mason and Hamlin invented something called the tension resonator, which are these big steel bars underneath the piano that grab the rim of the piano and pull it in, forcing this crown up. So when you come across a Mason and Hamlin, you're going to see separations on the soundboard just because they're older pianos and that's just what happens. But you'll pretty much guaranteed you're always going to have crown because there's these huge steel bars pulling the rim of the piano in. One little side note though, if you crawl up underneath a Mason and you see those bars, you will see nuts to adjust and tighten or loosen these bars. Don't do it. That is not for you to do. It's not even for a technician to do. I'm a third generation technician. I teach piano technology at the uh, Piano Technician Academy. I don't touch those things. Don't touch them. They're adjusted in the factory only. Um, maybe some very, very high-end piano technician who might be rebuilding the piano may feel that they need to adjust those, but I would never recommend it. Uh, but let me play this thing for you so you guys can kind of hear what Mason and Hamlin sounds like. Uh, what you should be listening for is Masons are very warm. Uh, they have a really nice bass and they have a ton of power down here in the bass while still having this bell-like sweetness up here in the treble.